Hello. This Hello. Is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV. And we have with us this morning Leslie Nolan. And she is going to talk to us about art, shamanic art. She does a lot of it. You can see one of her paintings behind her there. Yeah, I'm a little space to see. It's beautiful. That's the one I used to promote this show. Yes, this is Lola and Helica Luminosa. <laughs> okay. She told tell, me her name. Tell us more about her. So, Lola. So, I started to paint Lola uh, the day after my father's death. Oh. And uh, she went through many incarnations and changes. Uh, it was a nine month journey uh, painting her and writing a novella. And in the process of um, painting her, it was, um, you know, beyond just uh, dealing with grief and drama um, that happened with my family and siblings. It took me past that and through that. And uh, she opened a doorway for me in a sense, Julia, um, into what is my great work now. So in painting her, I've uh, shifted from a life of doing graphic design, illustration, marketing, art direction. And now I work with uh, creative entrepreneurs who've lost their mojo and inspirational vision and I help them to reclaim their power so that they can find the courage to create their great work. Wow. It's just miraculous, truly. It is, huh? Yes. Yeah. So you do like live painting classes or how do you do this? My main focus, it has changed over time. I've been doing this since February 2011 is when I started a painter. And by that fall, I was starting my women's circles and workshops. Now I focus on one-on-one -on -one mentorships mm -hmm. uh, because it's a very deep process and it's really to help people reclaim their vision. It could be personal. It could be reclaiming their vision through their life work. Um, and it truly is amazing. So... I still do some workshops and um, also have gatherings in my home and home studio. And I work with people in person or online because this work can, can be done throughout the world. I also mm -hmm. assist with an online platform. That's women around the world. Uh, so it can really happen anywhere, which is fantastic. Wow. Okay. Yes. And do you use Skype or what platform do you use? I do use Skype. Okay. I love Skype. Yes, yeah, Skype works for me. I uh, like Skype, but I need the recording. Prop. They don't have recording. Oh, anything. they don't. So you need to record your sessions. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, not my sessions so much, but these uh, these things I'm doing with people. These interviews. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand because it's more of a marketing sort of marketing and gathering your tribe and yes, um, having information. So that yes. makes sense for Zoom. And providing them with some information yes. and other sources besides me. Yes, that's fantastic. How would you tell someone who's kind of struggling on their own how they might get started back on their road to Mojo? <laughs> Well, that's a very good question. So there's usually what happens is usually one of the first steps someone needs to do is, um, you know, sometimes it's just to take some time knowing that they need to, t making the decision that they need to take this time for themselves and to analyze what they need. So sometimes it might just come in a form of rest and or allowing themselves the time to go on a creative journey. So mm -hmm. the first step is kind of this uh, permission step, giving themselves permission. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, what we do is um, when we start to work together, some of the first steps is creating a safe space 
where they can work. So even if it's Skype or in person, it's creating that container of safety. So um, I work with folks uh, no matter what their uh, spiritual background might be. I like to work with them and um, meet them where they are. So if they're Buddhist or uh, if they're shamans or if they're Christian or if they're Muslim, whatever they feel comfortable with, I like to open sacred space. because I feel that that is a very important step. And um, then from there, we do something very unusual, which is called intentional creativity. Mm -hmm. So we need to uh, set up a connection point where they are intending what kind of, um, it could be a healing, it could be request, it could be um, they're looking for inspiration. We have to be very specific uh, and create an intention for the journey into the painting journey. So that's paramount. By um, intention, you mean what they're trying, they, what do you mean by that? <laughs> So it would be something like, you know, setting an intention for the painting journey. So um, I should look back to see, I have notes somewhere on what my painting journey is right here with Lola, but I'm sure it was something with regards because of my father's death. It may have been, I'm not sure, but it's a good question. I'm going to try to find those notes. Might be something like, show me the way to find perfect health and healing with my family. Uh -huh. uh, okay. you know, through this the passing of my father so it the, like it's so one it's, of the intent of why you're taking the journey exactly so it's got to be specific it's okay. got to be positive um has to be sort of like uh i don't know if it has to be in the present tense but it has to be uh to be really careful about certain words like not to use the word not because that doesn't work <laughs> you know mm -hmm. the mind was Pick it up. So you have to be careful how you um, ask that question and to be as clear as possible. So I'll often ask people to, uh, you know, write it down for a few sentences to clarify what it is because that helps them. Sometimes that takes a little time. So you and, might have to um, do a whole session around that. Uh, yes, that's usually one of our first sessions in our mentorship. Our first one's usually very deep and it's in uh, discussing that really, because that is super and that is key. And um, my mother often says, be careful what you ask for. So your intention and how you set it, you know, trying to be as clear as possible and adding, um, you know, if there's some other little area that you might want to add there. So for some creative entrepreneurs, they might say something like, um, you know, show me the way, uh, show me the way to open up um, you know, possibilities to me stepping into my great work. Okay. So, uh, you know, those are some of the, you know, the first steps that we take. What's really important for some people is to, sometimes they don't realize that they actually need to rest. And painting uh -huh. can be, uh, you know, it could be a very relaxing and restful time. We usually work together anywhere from two to three hours at a, t at a pop if we're working privately. And my workshops are usually full day workshops. Um, I offer them here in my studio, it's by the Jersey Shore, but I'm starting to uh, do some workshops and I'm, I'm in the planning stage of doing one in Sedona. Mm -hmm. That'd be wonderful. Um, so, and that would probably be like a three day experience, three or four day experience. Uh, but when we paint together, it's usually two or three hours at a time. Um, and that gives a very good clear amount because once you start painting, like, you know, we usually time just goes like that. Yes. You know, like a place of no time. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, we go internally to receive images and information and what's so beautiful about this process julia is the painting begins to inform you once you connect 
to your painting, your painting will inform you. You can actually dialogue with your painting. And that's kind of the magic, as you will, of this particular process. And it's very, very, very exciting. Okay. Wow. That does sound exciting. That's basically, that's basically what I do too. Okay. And um, do you have a name for your process? What do you call that? Well, there's some different processes. I have some different um, programs that I do and they all have, you know, different themes. So the reason why I like to do the mentorships is um, I meet the person where they're at, so they will, um, the imagery that comes forth is inspired by them. So it's, there's no preconceived ideas or images. If I do a workshop, you know, it could be something like, you know, painting the spirit of the horse. You know, that's like a theme. Everybody works oh, on that theme okay. together. But what I really enjoy is the personal iconography that comes forward so um that feels you know more powerful for the person and it's their specific icon image that they need to work with at this time so for instance i'm going to give you an example of um two different students that i have um so one of my students maria she came to me first I think we were painting the Holy Mother and she came to one of those workshops she came to a couple of my group workshops and my women's circles and then from there she uh, came and did a very beautiful painting about this size we usually work about this size which is about 30 by 40 or a little larger and uh, that particular painting was really about unblocking herself she was holding her back herself back from some of her innate intuitions and gifts because they frightened her a little bit mm -hmm. um, but they're just her natural gifts so her first step was really unblocking and um so unblocking you had to how many sessions did that take to figure out what the blocks were so sometimes people are aware of them sometimes they're not aware of them so there's a few different processes that I do and what I can tell you is a painting of this size usually is a three-month process some people choose to work longer some people are very fast some people are more um, introspective and thoughtful with their painting process but it can be done in uh, three months and we usually meet uh, three times a month for two to three hours at a click okay. I have another process that is almost uh, nine months to nine month process it's very very deep and I don't do that unless they've done this three month experience with me uh -huh. so they get an understanding of the steps that need to be taken the technique we work together we see if that's a real match and um, that's extraordinarily deep process uh, I forget what your first question was how do you realize you realize the blocks by making the painting. I don't know how to explain it otherwise. Sometimes, you know, it's in the feedback or the process of it's talking. You know, there's a certain amount of talk. There's a certain amount of painting. Mm -hmm. um, I've been an, an artist uh, since a child. And all through high school, I was involved in all the arts. And then, you know, being in graphic design and art direction, I really understand um, image and icon because that's my first language before mm -hmm. speaking almost. Uh -huh. and so um, I guess I have this natural affinity for understanding and seeing pattern um, in people's work. And so I am able to prompt and ask, you know, questions and that will bring someone to also uh, come to a place of um, asking their painting too of what something might mean a symbol or um, something might that might come up so once you get involved in this process because you're working with consciousness when you're not painting you are um, 
you're continually kind of, you're coming in and out of thinking about your painting. So your dreams are inspired, your waking life is inspired. You start to see some of the symbols that you've painted on your painting come into your dreams or into your waking life. And then other symbols come up that from your life that you integrate in your painting. So it's just like dialogue of going back and forth between your waking life, your dream life, mm -hmm. your painting life. And I also encourage my students to journal and to write poems so that it's making the connection between the left part of the brain and the right part of the brain and creating new connections uh, in the synapses of the brain. And it's expansive. It kind of expands you more and more as you do this work, working with consciousness, dialoguing with your painting and um, making those connections. So what I could tell you about, you know, the blogs, it's for each person, it's very unique. I, I could not tell you that it's, it looks the same, but sometimes it might come up as a resistance. You know, somebody's resistant to do something. Mm -hmm. That's when you know, you know, mm -hmm. some really potent or um, they're, you know, they're fear, feeling some kind of fear around something silly. Or they're asking a question like, can I use the color yellow? I'm like, what? It's your painting. Use whatever color you want. But <laughs> you know, it's, it's sometimes they are like asking. They shouldn't have to ask for that direction, but they're asking for permission again. So lots of times the blocks can be something as simple as that. They're asking for permission, which might be something that in their waking life they feel they have to do. It's like it's your life. If you know you want to use yellow, you know, if you know you want to go to that movie, could be as simple as that. Let's go. It's okay. Here's the big giant pink permission slip. <laughs> says, yes, you can use yellow. Go to the movie you want to go to. You know, it can be as simple as that. And sometimes we stop ourselves. It can be as simple as that, and um, or a little bit more complex. So, I, so going back to Maria's story, when she first came to me, I think it would have been a year or so after she had gone through a divorce, and um, she was coming into her own and, and experiencing some different things herself. She had a job at Target that was paying her, um, you know, a nominal rate, uh, but covering her health insurance benefits. Mm -hmm. So um, when we started the mentorship, she, her real true love is as a yoga practitioner. And she always had some spiritual practice as well. But she really wanted to go more into doing her own work. So after the first painting, it became clear to her um, that she wanted to continue to work with me. And uh, she worked on the nine-month um, program with me. And then from there, um, she really came online with her work. So she then went from like, uh, she started to offer mentorships in yoga and some of her sound healing. So then she got to be like 50, 50, 50 at target, 50 in her own practice. Then she did another painting with me and she then went to uh, 20% at target, which by the way, they no longer offer health benefits, mm -hmm. 80% in her own mentorship. And uh, she's working on a painting right now. She's hoping to take it 100% in her own yoga practice, sound healing, etc. So for Maria, the painting is not the great work for her. The painting is the vehicle to access the information, the vision, mm -hmm. the power mm -hmm. to move forward into her great work. Um, uh, another student example would be Flo. She also came and did a painting workshop with me and then did another, came to many of my circles. She comes to almost all of my events that I hold and she continued her painting on her own. Now she is in her early seventies, retired uh, sales executive. And for her, painting was a way of claiming a new role at this very potent stage of her life she has become a visionary artist and just this fall she had a retrospective of her work 30 paintings that she has made 
that she has showcased. Wow. So, I mean, and she said to me, Leslie, to claim myself as a visionary artist and to see uh, a, a pathway for myself at this stage of my life was it. So you could see how this methodology can work either as a road to get to what your true work is or as the work. So it's very exciting. The work is so phenomenal that everyone does. And um, seeing the images and the symbols and how they've come to this place is so full of grace. And I feel so incredibly grateful to be able to do this work myself. It's very, very exciting. Wow, yeah, it sounds exciting. So you're going to be doing a workshop, a three or four day workshop in Sedona. Can you tell us I about am, that? I am, and I'm also doing, um, I have a little free event for anybody here who is here on the East Coast. It's this Sunday, March 26th. It's called Superpower Sunday, and it's a three hour workshop. It's Meet and Discover the Healing Work of Five Practices. So we'll have five practitioners, Melinda Applegate, who's on the call right now. She'll be teaching Qigong. There'll mm -hmm. be shamanism from Erica Grafe. There'll be Theta Healing from Abaya Cardova. Shadow Coaching Work from Carla Lavoie. And I will be uh, showcasing this intuitive painting. Um, and we're really looking forward to it. So everybody will have a little sampling of finding new energy strategies to reclaim your power ignite your vision in your life and work while empowering your world wow and yeah. where can people go to register for that well they can call me at 732-280-7989 and what i'd like to offer your uh listeners julia is a free get your mojo back breakthrough session. And I will give you that link number where people can register for it. That would be at mojo.acuityscheduling.com. Acuity spelled A-C-U-I-T-Y. Oh, I use them too. <laughs> I like them, I like that. Yeah, I like them. Yes. Okay, so they can get a free session. Is it obvious which one to choose? I'm sorry? Is in your list of services that are on that page, is it obvious which one they should choose? Um, it, should, it should say Mojo Breakthrough Session. Mojo okay. Breakthrough Session, okay. Yes, it should say that, Mojo Breakthrough Session. Okay. Okay, that sounds fabulous. I'm sure. And I will be uh, rebroadcasting this in an evening slot because okay. not too many people can come to these. It's tough. it's tough during the day, I understand. Yeah, so when it's going to, and then I will be uploading it to YouTube. So you may get people for quite a while. Oh, that'd be wonderful. I really appreciate that just seen it yeah okay so that yeah that is fascinating tell me more about opening the sacred space well it depends on how they like to do that some people prefer prayer um we can you know do the six or seven directions if you feel comfortable doing that mm -hmm. we can um, read from scripture uh we can meditate um, I had one student who's uh, Buddhist, so we would meditate. Uh, so it's, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay. Okay. I thought you meant maybe a physical space that you set well, up. It is sort of physical in a oh, sense. So, okay. I mean, that's how I look at it. So if, for instance, we were working together right now through Skype, in, in, in my office space here, I would light a candle. You would light a candle. I would ask you how you would like to open up sacred space. So it physically is in, I feel like it's physically in, in my space, in my room. It's also physically in your space and in your room. And we are quantumly connecting, right? If uh -huh. it's Skype, 
we're going to connect somehow, right? So if we're opening the space that way, we're, we're trying to create that space in our physical location. Right. Connecting. So it's the same thing if we're working together in, in the studio. You know, okay. I will, will, will light a candle. We'll, we'll be in that physical space together because I, I feel like I am, um, I'm a facilitator and midwife on this journey with my, with my student, you know, Ooh. and one of my gifts is seeing. So not only am I taking them through a particular method, but I am also um, kind of, it's like walking on a trail with them. I'm their pa a passenger on their journey. Uh -huh. Just kind of like holding the lantern up sometimes when they're not sure which way to go. Okay. Yes. Wow, that sounds powerful. It is. It's wonderful. And I think I'm going to take you up on that and do a session myself. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Well, have I missed anything? Have we missed anything? I don't think so. I mean, um, you know, they can look me up. I'm redoing my website, so I still have my old graphic design website. But I'll also give that information. It's LeslieNolanDesign.com. Okay. So they can always go there to connect, or they can email me at Leslie, that's L-E-S-L-I-E, at LeslieNolanDesign.com. Okay. Email is a great way to uh, connect with me because um, I'm always – doing my work through email these days. Right. Okay. Yes. Fabulous. Okay. And the mentorships, is that the three month and the nine months? Yes. The three month. We, I also do a monthly. Sometimes people want to test it out for a monthly. That's not typical because something of this size takes three months. Mm -hmm. But I have a monthly program. I have the three month program and then the nine month program. Okay. And Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, and they can, so they can do the breakthrough session and then they can. Yes, and then I usually, in that, I'll make, I'll make an offer based on what we discuss because um, everybody has different needs, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about timing or they're really ready. You know, they might be really ready. So it's discussing what it is that they need. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, this sounds very, very powerful. I'm so excited I met you. And I'm excited that I met you too. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk. And I wish you luck on all of your endeavors. Creativity is the journey and the way. Okay. And I will send you a link for when the rebroadcast will be and we can uh, uh, promote that so that people who weren't here today can also I will, do that. I will send that out to my tribe as well. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Julia, so much for the opportunity. I will be on your scheduler setting up an appointment. Fantastic. And once again, for our listeners, that's mojo.acuityscheduling.com. Acuity is A-C-U-I-T-Y? Yes. Scheduling, of course, dot com. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Julia.